Hey guys, it's Barry from Drive Electric Today. I want to talk a little bit about my thoughts on learning that full self-driving version 14 removed the max speed offset settings and essentially removed all control from the user as it relates to speed. So I'm going to go ahead and engage full self-driving from here. I am not running version 14. I am still running version 13.2.9 just a baseline you if you're just tuning in and if you have not yet subscribed to my channel i'm asking for your support my goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year 2025 so if you like this type of content i would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below it really does help me out now if you haven't heard full self-driving version 14 did remove the speed offset and control settings entirely so what that means now is that they've defaulted everything to the speed profiles to surrounding traffic and speed limit signage. Today, you have the ability to toggle your speed offset so you can tell FSD you wanna go certain percentage above or below the speed limit. Now, I wanna first of all say two things off the bat. One is I got to thinking how often do I actually use max speed and toggle it on the fly because again, with 14, they've removed that. This right scroll wheel now only changes the profiles. It has nothing to do with speed anymore. It's gone. And then the second thing is, is I want to survey you guys, and I want you guys to pitch in in the comments below, letting me know what your thoughts are about this. Now, I got to thinking, like I said, about how often I use it. And frankly, I use it a lot. It's something that I use very, very consistently. Almost every single full self-drive, personally, I use the speed control setting. I don't necessarily toggle with the percentage. I leave that 15%. That's just my baseline. So I leave that alone in the settings. But what I do very frequently is if I'm on the highway, for example, and my speed offsets 15%, let's say the speed limit is 65. Usually it'll go around like maybe whatever that math is, 75. I prefer to go, I'm just giving kind of round estimate numbers. I prefer to go 80, 85 on the highway. That's my preference. That's what I would do if I was driving. And so what I would do is I would toggle that number up on the fly. So my max speed would be like, you know, 75, but I want to go 85. So I would just quickly increase that and the car would follow suit. No problem at all. Right now they've removed that. And so it's quite a, quite a bold move. And I, I'm, I got to thinking, I'm like, well, why would they want to remove this setting? Like, was it, was it something that users complained about? and they wanted it removed from the user experience or did the tesla team you know face a different challenge that maybe the general public uh, isn't aware of i doubt i really highly doubt that users or customers complained and wanted it removed because as a content creator i see a lot of your comments and you know you guys are always asking me about speed offset and how to use it and you know how to configure it properly so like I know it's something that you guys use. And for me, from my perspective, I use it almost all the time. And in fact, I actually took a screenshot. I'll post it in the video as well. But Phil Dune from the Tesla team, I believe he's an engineer. He posted on X. Uh, this was one day ago at the time of the recording of this video. He said, turns out max speed was still too complicated. So we deleted it all together. The best part is no part. Speed profiles are much more responsive with V14 and if you really want to drive slow, try the new sloth profile. So to me, that means they've taken the stance of no user inputs at all, because I read somewhere else that they, they count any setting changes as a interference, if you will, with full self-driving. I think they used a different word, but any sort of like button that you change or thing that you modify on the fly while you're using FSD, the Tesla AI team interprets that as a FSD error, right? Now, I think that's a little too drastic because there's nothing wrong with adjusting the speed on the fly. I don't see why that needs to be translated as an error, but I guess from their point of view, they want no inputs at all by the user during the drive. So I can, I, I understand that part as well. However, a part of me thinks, and I'm not knocking this by the way, because I, I want to try it. I haven't, obviously I haven't received version 14 yet. So I want to sit behind the wheel and I want to experience how well or not well the speed's going to work now. But ultimately it has to be really, really fluent on reading signs, 
keeping up with the flow of traffic, making decisions on the fly as it relates to speed in order to satisfy the customers such as myself that have used the max speed offset frequently. So it has to be very on point. Now, they are going to tie the speed experience with the driver profile now. So it's extremely coupled at this point. So I, what I mean is if you're in hurry mode, the driver or the uh, the vehicle FSD is going to speed much more than it would in chill, right? If you're in standard, you might see a little bit of an increase in speed, but not as drastic as so it's what I'm saying is very coupled with the driver profiles. Now, I want to test it in the field once I receive it to see how it actually works. Um, Dirty Tesla just posted a bunch of videos. Chuck Cook just posted a bunch of videos. They haven't touched too much on the speed yet. Um, I haven't been able to pick up the experience from their videos in terms of like the speed. So right now, this is a perfect example. I'm in a 65 mile per hour highway speed limit zone and I'm topped out at 75. This is a perfect example. You could see my registered max is 75. Again, that's because of my offset. So if I go to autopilot settings, you'll see my max speed offset is 15%. Mind you, this is all gone now with version 14. It is, it is gone. You can't control this. But since this is version 13, what I can do right now is I can use this right scroll wheel and I can move it up to, let's say, 85, for example. Now you see the vehicle went from 75 to 76, 77, and it should keep rising up until it either meets a barrier in the front or a slower car in the front. So it should just consume that amount of speed. So with version 14, I, I would not be able to do that. That's not something that would allow me to do with version 14 at all, period. Like 79, now almost 80. So this is perfect. Now I'm in the speed in which I want to be going. Um, so I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm slightly concerned with how it's going to look and feel. And I want to survey you guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this change. It's a pretty drastic one. And again, I'm not, I want to be clear, I'm not knocking it because I haven't tried it. So I can't speak negatively about it because I haven't used it firsthand. I've seen other videos, but again, those videos, I don't, haven't found one yet from the early access group that have like hyper-focused on the speed quite yet. They're just kind of focusing as they should generally on the user experience any regression points, any positive feedback. So they're doing their thing. That's perfect. Once I get version 14 myself, I really want to focus on the speed. But additionally, I want to ask you guys and, and let me know down in the comments below either your thoughts about them removing it, how you feel about it, or if you don't use your max speed offset very often and you just let full self-driving do, do everything that it needs to do in version 13 today, let me know that down in the comments below. I'm just really curious to hear how many of you guys are leveraging speed control or not. I'm very curious. For me personally, like I said, it is something that I rely on very, very heavily. So again, we'll see how it's gonna look and feel. Um, I think I took another screenshot of some data points here. Let me see. No, I, I didn't take it. Um, but in the release notes, it basically, it signifies that speed is now really tightly coupled, as I already mentioned, with your profile. So we'll see. I mean, you know, judging on the videos I'm seeing, version 14 is, um, it, it seems like it's having an issue with brake checks a lot more, which it, it can or it may or may not be a regression point. It depends on the scenario. By brake checks, I just mean it's going kind of, um, it's speeding up and slowing down a lot more uh, consistently, which in my eyes is kind of a negative. You want it to be a little bit smoother unless there is a good reason to do a brake check consistently in a specific area maybe. And also from the feedback I'm learning and hearing about on these early access uh, users, the, the videos that they're posting is that um, it, it's a little bit, version 14 is a little bit more concerned with pedestrians. So it's a little bit more hazy, a little bit more nervous around pedestrians as as it relates to 13. 13 is a little bit more confident, not as jerky. Uh, and again, that can go, I can see both sides. Like you wanna be careful around pedestrians, 
but you also want to have a good driving experience and not, uh, you know, brake check the car behind you, in front of you, to the side of you. So you want fluid, you know, you want fluid movements, which is what we get in 13. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, overall, I'm kind of like mixed with how version 14 is performing right now based on the feedback I'm seeing from everybody. I'm, I'm thinking about like Canada FSD, Dirty Tesla, Chuck Cook, um, you know, those guys. I'm a little mixed. So we'll have to see. This is just the first release. So it's very possible that the next uh, deployment and the next micro update, whatever that looks like, uh, could potentially increase the experiences, right? This could be regression points just on the early access branch. Maybe they're trying to like stress test it and then pull it back. I'm not sure, we'll have to see, but right now I'm a little mixed and uh, the, the speed profiles definitely was something that kind of, you know, caught me by surprise. It definitely, um, I was not anticipating that to be a part of the, the release. So thank you for watching this video. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'm really asking for your support. It really does help me out if you hit that button down below. My goal is to get 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I really appreciate all of you guys that have tuned in, watched, commented, liked, and subscribed to my videos. So again, thank you so much. If you want to see anything in specific with version 14, as I gear up to uh, begin testing it, hopefully in the next couple of days, maybe weeks, depending on whenever I receive it, if there is something that you want to see, definitely leave your thoughts down below. Thank you again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.